You're listening to Fringianity. Hello, this episode is going to deal with Israel and the Temple Mount and all that stuff, going back to the sacrifices, all kinds of stuff with Israel and the sins of Israel kind of stuff. And it's not saying all Jews are bad, just to get that out of the way. So as a disclaimer, I'm not talking bad about all the Jews on the earth, and I'm not hating the Jews. I mean, Jesus himself was a Jew, and many of his disciples were Jews, so I'm really on their side here. The point of this episode is to talk about how Israel is disobeying God, a lot of the people in Israel, and the government and stuff, and then how they eventually will bring in the Antichrist. And who could the Antichrist be? There's all kinds of ideas on who that will be. But one thing's for certain, they sure want a third temple, and they sure want to go back to the sacrifices, and they sure do not love Jesus. And for that, they will bring in an Antichrist, and they will worship him. This is biblical. So that being said, let's get into some scriptures to go along with this type of stuff. 2 Thessalonians 2, three, Let no one deceive you in any way. For that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. So the man of sin is revealed, or the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist, is revealed first. Doesn't sound like the rapture happened at this point because there's still people that are going to be persecuted by him. And it sounds like it's the saints. Uh, listen to this scripture. Daniel 7.25 He shall speak words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and shall think to change the times and the law and they shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. Daniel 11.37 He shall pay no attention to to the gods of his fathers, or to the one beloved by women. He shall not pay attention to any other god, for he shall magnify himself above all. 1 John 2.18 Children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, that Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, Know that it is the last hour. 1 John 4, 3 And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. 2 John 1, 7 for many deceivers have gone out into the world. Those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. Revelation 13:16 through 17. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Revelation 19.20 And the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet who in its presence had done the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped its image, these two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. John 5, 4, 3 I am come 
in my father's name and you receive me not if another shall come in his own name him ye will receive he's talking about the antichrist in the end times and the jews they would not receive jesus when he come saying he's in the father's name you know he's a son of god oh but they will receive they receive another one who comes in his own name the antichrist in other words that tells you something that tells you what kind of people will be on the earth in the end times and what kind of god the a good chunk of the jews is looking for they're not looking for jesus they're looking for the antichrist but they are deceived and they don't believe that they're looking for the antichrist they look for they think they're looking for their messiah because they do not accept jesus as their christ so they don't want to worship Jesus. They're still looking for their Messiah. In other words, Jesus does not count at all. So the New Testament is, is not there at all. And I know a lot of people already know all this stuff. So I'm not talking to you. I'm just saying that this is, this is kind of a sum of all the things that I've noticed that's going on that's not right about Israel and the people in Israel and the government that's not leading the people in a biblical, godly way. In the past, I used to be all for Israel. I was one of those people that whatever Israel did, it must have been right. I, I, I wouldn't look into it. I wouldn't even research anything because, well, the Bible says that those are God's chosen people, so who am I to judge, you know? And that's basically my whole idea behind Israel for the longest time. And I just didn't, you know, whatever. I was just ignorant, you know? And then I just, for some reason, I started noticing things. Somebody brought up something on one show and talked about Tel Aviv and, and all this gay pride stuff. Yeah, there's a, there's a thing. I might as well get into that for, first. So yeah, 250,000 people gather for a gay pride event. Um, and they're calling it, uh, Tel Aviv is the gay pride capital of the world or something like that. Yeah, they're talking, they're bragging about this stuff. They're talking about how wonderful it is that Israel is in support of gay pride and all that. Well, look at uh, the God of the Bible. What did he say about that? He was against that. He said, he called it sin, right? So people like I used to be that were in support of Israel all the time and just, you know, Israel could do no wrong. They're God's chosen people. Well, at the very same moment I'm saying that back then, uh, God's chosen people were having gay pride events that were literally the capital of the world. That's how mu many people gathered there in sin. That sounds a little uh, contradicting, doesn't it? And then you get people that are out there that are on shows and all this stuff, and they got books to sell, they got everything to sell, Israel, 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 and Israel, and oh, blah, 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 we're going to make all this money off of Israel, and the prophecies, and all this stuff about Israel, 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 and all this great, you know, Israel stuff about, you know, everything, about how Israel is this righteous, holy place, and I'm not talking about everybody who has a book, I'm just saying that there are people that talk about how wonderful everything that Israel does is. And then here you got them literally sinning and promoting sin to the whole world. Is that holy? I'm trying to I'm just trying to find where the holiness in Israel is, if this is what what they're selling the world, right? Okay, that's that's okay, that that aside. Then we get into the Zionists in charge there. I mean, it, their god is money more or less. I mean, George Soros, Zionist Jew, a Zionist Jew, everybody hates that guy. Oh, that guy's against Trump. He, he wants to destroy America, right? Yeah, that's, that's the guy that everybody's against, you know, everybody knows that he's working against America. Okay, he's the bad guy. Zionist Jew. Yes, he is. And then you got people, lawmakers in Florida and other places are trying to make laws now because Israel has a big sway in American politics somehow that uh, it's against the law to speak against Israel or against uh, Zionism. That means George Soros, people. That means if, if they make a law that says that you cannot speak against Israel or uh, Zionists and that that's, that's considered anti-Jewish, right? That's what they're going to call it. 
then that means that you cannot say that George Soros is a bad guy then, according to that law, right? You see how the rope is tightening around your neck and you don't even know it? And that's happening during the Trump presidency. Because all of the Christians and all the Republicans have gone back to sleep now that Hillary's not elected, right? They've gone back to sleep now that they don't have to worry, oh, Trump's going to take care of us. I'm not saying Trump's this horrific bad guy. I'm just saying the facts. And I don't hate Jews. I'm just saying that if you lose your right to say that George Soros, per se, Zionist Jew George Soros, is a bad guy, now you lose the right to point the finger at any criminal who is a Zionist Jew. And I say Zionist, in other words, they're not, they're in it for, uh, they're not really about Jesus. Okay, I'll put it that way. Or you got these Kabbalists into magic. You're doing, there's all different kinds of uh, Kabbal, Kabbalist, whatever, mis- Jewish mysticism. And they're into stuff that is completely opposite of what the Bible says that you should be into. You're not supposed to have any wizards or any of all this. They're using sorcery, basically, according to the Bible. That's not good either. God does not, uh, does not endorse that. So these are things that's happening in Israel. And Christians, like people, uh, big names, all these famous preachers in America, just send, flow, just send boatloads and planes in to Israel. Just send money to Israel. Send money to Israel. The Holy Land. Send money to the Holy Land. Send money to the Holy Land. Well, what are you, what are you endorsing here? Are you endorsing the Tel Aviv uh, gay pride parades of, of thousands and thousands of people? So much that they call it a capital of the world? Are you endorsing that as a Christian? Where's that money going? Is it going to Zionists who don't believe in Jesus Christ? Is that helping uh, the, the cause? You send all this money to Israel and you realize, you don't apparently you don't realize that most of these Jews that are in power positions, just like in America, the people in power here are not usually Christians. It's just like that in Israel, right? And most of those people don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, they say they believe in God. I don't know what God, though. That's a generic name. I mean, we have Hollywood stars in in Hollywood right now. Oh, I believe in God. I'm very spiritual. Well, be more specific, because you might be a Satanist, and that might be your God. I don't know, right? Isn't that the truth? We don't know what God is. They're using for that name. That God is a generic name that you put as a higher power above you. So we don't know which one they're talking about. And yet we're like, oh, they're Christian, obviously. Really? Even Hillary Clinton said she's a deeply deep-seated religious person. Oh, does that mean she's Christian? She said she believes in God. Does that mean she's Christian? Oh, we all know that she's not Christian, obviously. We can judge by her fruits, right? And the same can go for these Jews that say, oh yeah, we believe in God, but you know, keep on flying in that money. You know? Why don't we fly in the gospel? These The the Jews need Jesus. That's what they need. And I know it's hard for them to accept Jesus because they've gone down this path of basically seeking their next Messiah still for so long that it's going to be hard. But I'm sure that Jesus will speak to them. That's not my job to save them. It's Jesus' job to save them. It's my job to spread the gospel. It could fall on deaf ears or it could fall on ears that will hear it. But I can't make that decision whether or not they're going to hear it or not. That's not my job. That's the Holy Spirit's job to speak to them. My job is to give them the gospel. And theirs is to receive it or not to receive it, depending on what their will is. So this is just something that I've been thinking about for so long on how to try to do a podcast about this. Because uh, a lot of people just say you're anti-Jew or you're anti-Israel or you're anti... I don't care. Jesus said when he comes, the mountains will melt. So the temple in Israel, that's not going to matter. And by the way, the... Jesus is coming with his own. Heaven will come to earth. A new heaven and a new earth. 
Does that sound like the buildings we build now are going to be around when he comes and makes a new heaven and a new earth on earth? It doesn't sound like man made that stuff. So I don't know why everyone wants to build, you know, the build their kingdom now type of theology, you know. Uh, the seven mountain mandate type crap. I don't understand what they think they're going to keep around because it's gonna. it sounds to me like everything's going to be burnt up. I mean, literally, water will dry up. Rivers will dry up. I, I, there's just a bunch of stuff in the Bible that talks about that in the end times and even in Daniel. And people just completely miss all of that. But anyway, staying focused. Uh, the Tel Aviv stuff, though, here's a little commercial that I heard. Just listen to the lyrics and listen to how, how party-like this is. This is, this is, you know, this is holy Israel that made this commercial. But listen to the lyrics. And if you don't quite understand them, I'll explain them later on, the main parts of them, after you've listened to this. I'm not your toy. I'm a beautiful creature. I don't care about your modern day preacher. This is Israel. This is a commercial about the Tel Aviv gay pride. You know, the, the complete sin and the commercial, if you actually see it, it's complete sin. And it's talking about, you know, men being with men, women being with women, you know, just like in Sodom and Gomorrah, the same whole thing. The reason that whole thing was destroyed. But this is in God's holy land, right? It's, it's the holy land. It's very holy, right? Send all your money, Christians. Send all your money to Israel. Send all your money. We have to support them, right? This is what you're supporting. 250,000 people getting together in sin. In Tel Aviv. The capital city of gay pride. I didn't make I I didn't write those words. That's their words, not mine. You see, and you know all these big churches in America. Oh, just fly that money in millions of dollars for the Jews. Help the Jews to sin so that they can go to hell. How about send in the Bibles? Send in uh, people to talk about Jesus with them. Good people that actually can talk to them and not fight with them. Somebody who can preach the gospel. That's what they need. But that commercial literally it just showed off. I mean, yeah, it had the club music, the party life, you know, live as you, you know, do as thou will. 
That's the whole commercial. That's the theme of the commercial, basically. Do what you will. That's the whole of the law. Alice, Alistair Crowley. I mean, do what you want. I mean, and they're living in a Kabbalah uh, mysticism world, which is totally counter to the Bible, totally counter to Jesus Christ. And they're mocking Christ because they want a third temple. And they, they're still seeking Messiah, who died for them already, but they don't want to count that. And that being said, here's uh, Ben Shapiro. I used to think this guy was a really genius, a really smart genius, but then I realized there were some flaws in his character. Yeah, he doesn't believe in Jesus Christ, and he's still seeking his Messiah. Yeah, the Messiah. Uh, the Messiah he's going to get is going to be the Antichrist, but he won't hear that because he's so smart. Listen to this. So I was curious, by the way, that the, you know the ancient Jews, said, the, you know, the Shoal, and you don't go anywhere after your your death, right? Yeah, the, the idea of the afterlife is uh, is a pretty modern invention in Judaism. Yeah. It really it really yeah. only crops up historically speaking a little bit in the prophets, and it's usually the late prophets. Right. And it's and it's really maybe as a response to early Christianity or or right. Greek thought. So yeah, in the in the Bible itself, there's no reference in the Torah. There's no right. reference to the afterlife. So what, what, what at do you all. think happens after the death of your body? So I mean. I only have suspicions because, again, uh, unverifiable. My suspicion is that if there, if there is a God, which I believe, uh, who exists outside of time and space, and that what animates me is that I'm made in the image of God, and that what animates my capacity is that I'm made in the image of God, that I reunify with God. That basically, there's a the, the traditional Jewish take on this has been that there's a cleansing process. Judaism doesn't believe in eternal hell, so it's instead this idea that there's a cleansing process for your for your soul, the part that you got from God, that spark of life that you got from God. You've schmutzed it, schmutzed it up while you're alive, and now there's a cleansing process, and then and that's what hell is, sort of. Uh, and then you are reunited with God, and you have greater understanding. Uh, the idea of me being a distinct personage outside of my body, I think, is is a difficult one. Uh, that's that's my own personal. Belief so you don't think you're God. physically resurrected uh, into heaven with God? No, yeah, I just, think I think that it, something like a soul or energy or consciousness or something. Like yes, that. Yeah. yes, uh, a form like an Aquinas right. form, right? right. Uh, but yes, right. I, I think that. Th- those are actually two different things in Judaism as well. Like the, the idea of tichiyat hametim, which is the idea of resurrection of the dead, uh, that's a different idea than what happens after you die, right? right. Tichiyat hametim is the idea that eventually the Messiah comes, that we'll all be resurrected back in our physical bodies at a certain point, which, you know, honestly, given the nature of how science is moving and, and the possibilities of cloning is, is actually less crazy than it, than it sounded probably a couple of thousand years ago. Yeah, I debunk most of the modern, you know, the singularities coming, we're going to upload everybody into the cloud, <laughs> and this is not going to happen. No, definitely. I mean, not. that's good. To, that's good to know because I just feel like the computer would be really weird. It's, it's weird <laughs> to live inside a computer, but. Or, or, or that we're living in the in, in a computer now. But there's no buffering or you know little pixels that are going off. Every there. so often, when I'm just staring <laughs> off into space, it's because. But the but while went I got down. you here, I, I want to push you on something. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, my Christian friends and people that I debate, particularly on the resurrection. You know, they have a whole series of arguments. You know, if you just followed our reason, you would accept Jesus as your savior. And my answer to this is, the great. Jewish rabbis who are smarter than you and I sitting here, they've gone through all these arguments. Why don't, why don't they accept Jesus? Why don't you accept Jesus as the Messiah? Okay, so the, the reason that I don't accept Jesus as the Messiah is because I think that a lot of the arguments in fi- So Jesus as the Messiah is a different figure than anything that exists inside Judaism. So when people say that the, the Judaism predicts the, the coming of Christ, uh, the, the change in the nature of what Christ is, what a Messiah would be, is different from Judaism to Christianity. So Judaism never posited that there would be God come to form in physical form, come to earth in physical form, and okay. then, you know, acting out in the world in, in that way. Judaism posits that God is beyond space and time. Occasionally he intervenes in history, but he doesn't take physical form. It's one of the key beliefs of Judaism, actually, is an right. incorporeal God. Uh, so that means that it's it's a the the idea is is actually foreign to Judaism of of a merged God man uh, who then is who is God in physical form but then dies and is resurrected and all this this is it's a, it's just a different idea than exists in Judaism. So you're not waiting for the Messiah to come, right? He's not coming in the. In so the, in the I'm waiting form. I'm waiting for the Messiah to come in the form of a political figure, right? So the so the, the Messiah in in Judaism is a guy who's going to come back and is going to establish peace in Israel and is going to assure that that. You know, there's a, there's sort of a happier world with a bunch of political aspects to it, as as explained by Maimonides. But he's going to die too, right? He's not going to come back and everybody lives forever and, and any so of that kind of stuff. He's a corporeal agent. He's just like us, right? But, 
No, right. and the, the, in the Jewish view, any person could be the Messiah. Any Jew can be the Messiah in the Jewish view. Right. Right. So I could be it. Who knows? But, it's not, <laughs> but I'm not. But well, it's, you're but off to a good start. But, but, <laughs> but, but that's, that's a different yeah. view uh, than, than a Christian view. So the argument typically made to Jews by Christians on this is that Jews are, it, it's forecast by the Bible. Right. Um, and right. that's, and for Jews, we, we have a whole different read when you read the Hebrew about why this may or may not be true. But Christians claim the Old Testament predicts it's going to come. So right. you disagree. Well, I, I disagree because, I mean, I think a lot of the, a lot of these verses that are cited are actually misreads of the Hebrew. So actually, I, I read Hebrew. So, okay. it's, so I think All that, right. uh, but that, but, you know, again, I, I, that's not to disclaim the, even in the Jewish view, the impact of Christianity on world history, right? Yeah, so that's a different question. Right, We're just exactly. talking about the ont- ontological question. Right. Is there a God out there, if, and is there a Jesus, a Messiah, in physical form? Right, so I have, I have actual beliefs that run counter to the idea of God taking physical form as a human being, because I think that that leads to a lot of weird, yeah, weird side effects. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah, like to my Christian friends, you know, well, you're resurrected in heaven. Well, how old am I? I mean, physically resurrected. Yeah, 30. You know, some of them say you're 30, because that was a, you know, it's a good... <laughs> Jesus was 30 when, you know, and so... Uh, but you know, but I'm 63 now. So what happens to all the memories I have of the last 33 years? Do they go into the brain? Yeah, no, the these, are, these are definitely puzzling questions, yeah, that, and, which yeah. is why I don't believe in that version uh, right, of a heaven. But right. so he did, none of them, those guys don't it just, you know, Jesus is a joke. <laughs> those people, those small minded people that it's insane. But that's ironic that Jesus literally said, you know, another will come in his own name and you will believe in him. You know, and they literally say that they're waiting for a Messiah to come. Okay, so there, and it could be a man. Well, what does the Bible say? The man, the mark of the beast, or the number, is a man, is a number. It's a, it's a number. It's a man's name, or whatever. It's, I'm screwing it up. But my point is, is it's literally a man that's going to show up. And go figure, he's going to sit in the temple and proclaim himself to be God in front of the Jews. And then the Jews are going to suffer greatly and tribulation and all that stuff and, you know, the whole thing. So that's that's sad that they're, they're, they're going to just suffer all the way up until they, they realize that they were wrong. And then they're going to probably cry out to the real God and the real Jesus and say, oh, I'm so sorry, we're so sorry, at that point. And maybe that's the reason for the Antichrist. Maybe he has a job. Maybe the point is to have the Antichrist is because they're stubborn and they're rough. They just will not accept the, the, the knowledge that they know about Jesus. So they have to actually experience an Antichrist in order to actually turn and realize, hey, maybe they're wrong. That's maybe the purpose of the Antichrist. But here's the question. Who is the Antichrist? Um, I know one, uh, there's this thing coming up here. Uh, Donald Trump, his name, he has, a, he has his uh, face on the coin in Israel. And that's, that's something. And uh, also, he says that Jared Kushner is going to bring about peace in the Middle East, in, in Israel. Jared Kushner. Yeah. The guy with 666 uh, Fifth Avenue. That's the building. Yeah, 666 Fifth Avenue. That's the place he decided to buy or whatever. Okay. He's also friends with everybody, all these world leaders, including... Uh, the Saudi crown prince, the same one who, the bone saw guy, the guy that had that guy bone sawed up in the, um, in the embassy. Yeah, the same guy. And he's still friends with them today. In fact, they use WhatsApp to communicate back and forth. Jared Kushner. And Jared Kushner, you know, he talks about uh, American top secret stuff over WhatsApp. Yeah. Didn't Hillary, don't, doesn't everyone want Hillary Clinton to go to prison? Because of she uses you know servers at home and all this stuff, but Jared Kushner he can use WhatsApp, WhatsApp or whatever to communicate, just a messaging thing, with the Saudi prince, and also with Netanyahu. Oh, but that's okay because we're working with Israel. You see how that works? You can't have it both ways, okay? You say Hillary Clinton's guilty, and yet this guy is just as guilty, if not worse. And he's just nonchalantly, it's okay, because he's, you know, related to the president, Trump, the great savior. 
you know, the one that all the Christians just, as soon as uh, he was elected, they went to sleep and now they don't stand up for anything anymore. And on their watch, we're literally seeing uh, perhaps an Antichrist rising. Because Trump is trying to bring about the third temple. Or he's trying to bring peace to the Middle East and all of the things that the Antichrist is supposed to do. I don't know if Trump is the Antichrist. I don't think he is. But what if Jared Kushner is? Jared Kushner is everything. He's got. He's working with the Saudis. He's working with the Jews. Everybody's on board with him. Check this out. There have been at least a dozen Jewish rabbis that have said the Messiah is on earth now. He's been identified. He is soon going to make himself known. Drum roll, please. We present the actual voice of Jared Kushner. He has been seen but not heard. Silently watching President Trump sign orders. Jared Kushner is usually in the middle of the action, but publicly mom. In the Jewish mindset, for the Messiah to arrive, you can't think of him like we think of Messiah. We think of Messiah after the model of Jesus. He's the Son of God, divine birth, all of that. That's not the way the Jews look at the Messiah. They're looking for a king. They're looking for a political leader. As a matter of fact, Messiah to them means the anointed one, and it goes back to the ancient days when they would anoint a king and recognize him as this is the man that God sent. I'm not saying that they think he is the Messiah. What I actually think is that most of the rabbis there think he's John the Baptist and the Messiah is about to appear. He's the forerunner. He's the guy that's going to start the message in the wilderness and the Messiah is going to come in on his heels. elect Trump's secret weapon, Forbes magazine <clears throat> trumpeting on their cover. The man they credit with Donald Trump's victory, President-elect's own son-in-law, Jared Kushner. Trump's victory, everybody admits that Trump is a marketing genius, but so is Jared Kushner. He did a lot of stuff that really helped marketing Trump, changing his brand, if you will, from a TV star businessman to a president. By the way, Teal was a supporter of Trump. Eric Schmidt, the former Google CEO, was not a supporter of Trump, but he recognized Jared Kushner's genius. He said, Jared Kushner is the biggest surprise of the 2016 election. Best I can tell, he actually ran the campaign and did it with essentially no resources. Yeah, that was really, uh, that really, that was the most, uh, that was the most shocking, the most shocking, the most shocking thing in the story, that Eric, uh, Eric Schmidt, big backer of Hillary, and also helped them, her build her, her tech machine. If, she, if he's saying this is a big deal, watch this, this Kushner guy, I knew I had a story. Well, the way Jared did it was really taking the Trump campaign, dealing with it as if it was a business enterprise. And Despite having no experience in politics or government, Jared Kushner is said to be one of Donald Trump's most trusted advisors. Some analysts call him the Trump whisperer. They too believe that we are in the end times. They too believe that the Messiah is about to appear. We would say the second coming is about to happen, but their Messiah is going to be a false Messiah. He's going to be the Antichrist, right? And so we need the temple service. We need to get back into Israel, the Messiah. Now, why are they saying that? They have identified somebody. I mean, I, there could be a few rabbis there that think he's the Messiah. The smart ones in Israel are looking at him right now. They're saying he is God's 
what we would call John the Baptist. He is God's messenger. When he takes over in January, there is a 5777 countdown to the appearance of the Messiah, and something could happen overnight that could lead to the reconstruction of the temple. A lot of the um, scholars that I've spoken to uh, talk about how the building of this next temple is really going to bring peace to Israel and to bring safety from all her, her enemies. And so in that way, I can see that um, any maybe leader that would be raised up or somebody that would be able to bring the nations together, especially those who might align with Israel, that there might be some agreement that, that, that the temple could exist there and this person could be set up in the temple. What we know is that's probably going to be a false messiah, because as we read in the book of Daniel, that there's a false messiah that's going to uh, make a peace agreement. And so that's the, the potential, is that something would be built for the false messiah to set himself up. No administration over the course of four decades has been able to solve the Arab-Israeli conflict. Barak says with a new set of leaders in the Arab world wanting a solution, the timing is right. One of the crucial assignments Donald Trump already has in mind for his son-in-law, bringing peace to the Middle East. He'll make a deal with Israel that no one else can. You know, he's a natural, Trump told the Times of London. President Trump declared that his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, could broker the toughest deal in the world, lasting peace between Israelis and Palestinians. Jared Kushner plans to travel to the Mideast on Wednesday to jumpstart a U.S.-led peace effort. Kushner will spearhead the push for negotiations between the Israelis and Palestinians. As President Trump's senior advisor, Jared Kushner is tasked with, among other things, trying to bring peace to the Middle East after defeating ISIS. A White House official says Kushner who joined Mr. Trump on his recent trip to the Middle East will hear directly from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. President Trump was in Israel just last month and talks have been continuing since then. Now he's asked his son-in-law to take the lead as the conversation continues. I am committed to trying to achieve a peace agreement between the Israelis and the Palestinians. The president believes forging a historic peace agreement is possible and believes his son-in-law is especially fit to achieve it. He is so great. If you can't produce peace in the Middle East, nobody can. The president's advisor and son-in-law, Jared Kushner, is playing a key role in shaping Trump administration foreign policy. Jared Kushner has really emerged as a quiet force in the Trump White House. He serves as a main conduit with foreign contacts in Mexico, China, Canada, among others. 36-year-old Jared Kushner has no diplomatic experience, but he's become an envoy to foreign leaders, at times in place of the Secretary of State. President Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor is in Iraq tonight. Jared Kushner was invited along by the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to get a first-hand look at the fight against ISIS. And this trip really shows that he's taking a more active role in the Middle East issues that are on his agenda, and there are many, including trying to broker peace between the Israelis and Palestinians. James? It's a big portfolio. Finessing the strained relationships with Mexico and working with the Canadian government are also Kushner projects. Kushner has been pivotal in shaping the U.S.'s relationship with Mexico. Jared Kushner led the Mexican foreign minister into the Oval Office where they talked to President Trump and they advised him to tone down his rhetoric about Mexico. And he's now running a newly created office to integrate business ideas into the government. Critics say Kushner, an Orthodox Jew, is pushing Trump toward a more hardline stance on Israel. When it comes to Israel in the Middle East, the stakes are especially high, and for Kushner, it's also personal. Can I reveal, Jared, how long we've known you? <laughs> well, he, he was never small. He was always big. <laughs> he was always tall. But I... The, the relationship between Israel and America is stronger than ever, and we really thank Prime Minister Netanyahu for his leadership and his partnership. Thank you. Thank you. So that's uh, Jared Kushner. Now, I know a lot of people think, oh, how could he be, you know, the Antichrist? He doesn't seem like the type. He's a little too quiet. He's, you know, whatever. He's a good-looking guy. He's, he's rich. Uh, he's got everything. He's got, apparently, a lot of people like him, including George Soros, who he's partners with. George Soros, yeah, the Zionist Jew that's against America, that wants to take down America, the giant Zionist Jew that everyone says is against Trump, all that stuff. Yeah, that same guy, yeah, him. Black Lives Matter guy, uh, helps Antifa, gives money to these uh, illegal immigrants to come into America, all this stuff. Yeah, that same guy. Yeah. Jared Kushner. 
There you go. But Israel is seeking their Messiah. So, you know, according to the, the rules of Israel, any Jewish man could become the Messiah, including Jared Kushner. It sounds like Netanyahu is in love with him in that last little clip. So it sounds to me like uh, you might just welcome him home. And he uses that WhatsApp to communicate with the Saudi prince all the time. Uh, you never know. That guy might help him out in becoming the Antichrist. You never know. Or maybe there's some kind of a deal that's going to happen with that. I don't know. But I know recently they, they did a, 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 it's kind of a mock sacrifice, or you know, they put the altar up next to the, the temple mount or whatever, but they, you know, didn't really televise it and promote it that much because they didn't want the Muslims to find out because then there might be rioting. But they recently, they brought the actual thing there that they're going to use that's going to be in the temple when it's built. They have the red heifer, according to them, that they can use for sacrifices and all that stuff. And they have everything. They have all these people. They have the temple designs. Everything's practically done right now, just ready to be built. So all they need to do is destroy the Muslim side of the deal, and they're instantly on the mount, and they're rebuilding instantly. They're, they're in a hurry, it seems like. They so badly want the Messiah. I, I think they want the Messiah more than Christians want Jesus. I really think that they're they're more in love with the idea than Christians are of Jesus returning. Yeah, I really think that they're really waiting for uh, for their Messiah. They're more um, happy to see the Messiah come than they are for Jesus Christ. And their Messiah is the Antichrist, so just keep that in mind. But, you know, they're just going to keep pushing for this peace agreement in with Palestine and uh, and Israel. And yeah, just keep in mind, there's also Christians in Palestine. I know that's untalked about, and that's totally something that no one ever brings up. But yeah, there are Christians in Palestine that are treated badly by the Jews. That's another thing that people forget about and don't even actually talk about ever. So yeah, and that peace is not going to be good anyway, because it's going to bring about the tribulation when the Antichrist shows up. But because the Jews are so uh, stubborn, they will not believe that, they're going to go headlong right into it. And that's the way it's going to be. And this is prophecy. But I think before we start getting all happy, oh, Jesus might return, or sending millions of dollars to Israel and going crazy, we should start preaching the gospel. We really need to start preaching the gospel to these people. And whether they take it or not, it's not our job. Jesus' job is to save them, not mine. They just need to hear the gospel and not hear billions of dollars coming in. Okay? That's not helping them, sending them money. So just keep that in mind. That's my biggest statement I could, I could say on this whole episode. It's not about hating the Jews. It's about loving them and praying to God that they come to know Jesus before uh, the Antichrist wipes them out and they d didn't know Jesus. Because they're trying to bring about the Antichrist and they don't even know it. So the Christians are know Jesus Christ and these people need Jesus Christ. So it's our job to try to give them that information as much as possible. So stop sending billions of dollars, Billy Graham and all these big foundations and all this to Israel. Just start sending the gospel. And I understand Billy Graham's dead, but I'm just saying that big giant churches are sending millions and millions of dollars to Israel. And what does it? what is it helping? We need to send millions and millions of uh, people to preach the gospel before it's the end. And the end is very soon, apparently. If they're building this third temple or they're this, this close to building it, that's very soon. So that means the Antichrist is not far away from being revealed as soon as that temple is made. So that's pretty much all I have to talk about on this episode. But this is a big subject I wanted to talk about. So I hope you've enjoyed it. So thank you for listening. If you like this show... Please share it with your friends, promote it as much as possible before the internet censors us and takes down all of our content. Also check out the Fringianity Podcast Facebook group and page. New shows will be posted there, as well as show images. 
so check that out too. That's all for this show, so thank you very much for listening, and God bless.